Hey guys, Backyard Scientist here. A couple years ago, I made an induction heater and I gotta be honest with you guys, it was kind of lame. Oh, I feel like I cheated you guys. Sure, it could explode batteries and bullets, but the lock was made from easy to melt aluminum and I could only melt a small amount of steel in a super insulated graphite crucible. I also never achieved my goal of levitating and melting metal. So the goals for this video are to make an induction heater that's powerful enough to levitate and melt metal, get steel hot enough to melt in the open air, and do it all for less than 1200 bucks. Induction heaters work by switching electricity back and forth through a coil to induce eddy currents in the metal. Then, eh. Have you guys seen that video by Lewis Weiss where he basically cooks a chicken just by slapping it a bunch? Now imagine you slap a chicken once and just hold your hand on the chicken. Uh, not, not a lot's gonna happen, right? Now slap that chicken 50,000 times per second and uh, congratulations, you know how induction heating works. You actually need the electricity to go back and forth really fast because the electricity moving through the coil makes the electrons in the metal fly around back and forth, literally slapping up the atoms, which creates heat by friction on like a microscopic scale. Now we could try to do this like a biology dropout, or we could use transistors to do the work for us. These are called IGBTs and you can think of them like a switch. <laughs> Basically, all you need to know is that they can switch huge amounts of power back and forth through our induction coil. <laughs> all right, let's put this bad boy together. First, it's the IGBTs, then some thermal paste, and then a cooling block to keep everything cool because these get hot. Then the bus bars, capacitor, and rectifier, which take the AC and turn it into DC and then distribute it to the switches. And then if everything goes well, congratulations, you have just made your first inverter. Okay, I've been working all day to get this set up for the first test. So I have everything water cooled. I've got the fan, the radiator, the pump over here, and a little power meter to tell me how much power I'm going to be drawing. So let's try it. Let's see how fast we can heat up this steel bar. Look, it's not hot, but we're going to see how fast we can get it hot, maybe even melting. So let's try it. Here we go. Three, two, one, two kilowatts. Oh, it's getting red. It's getting red. Oh, it's up to... Oh my gosh, 60 amps, 70 amps, 6,000 watts of power going into the steel bar right now. Look at that. And oh my gosh, it's gonna melt. It's, it's about, oh, oh, whoa, it did melt. Look at that. Oh, that worked amazing. That was like 30 seconds till it melted this. This is, this is one inch by a quarter inch. That's a lot of steel. So this coil that I made worked out great. It's just a normal coil, except for I covered it in plaster. That way, when I put the metal in here, it wouldn't short out the coil and lay across the metal bars and short everything out. All right, check out something cool that I found out. I found out that if I heat up a piece of metal till it's almost melting, and then I can whip it and the molten metal will fly right off the steel bar. Check this out. Let's see if I can hit the GoPro. <laughs> That is so cool. You know, I always joke and I say that it's impossible to set Florida on fire, but it looks like I somehow managed to do it this time. So now I have to condense all of this mess into a box, but all of those options were too small. So I had to build my own box out of wood. It's not pretty, but it gets the job done. It's also pretty light, ugh, considering everything that it's got in it. Whoa, okay, maybe, okay, maybe it's not that light. I also spent all night cooking up something in the oven. It's a little crucible holder so I can melt metals in it. All right, so here's a crucible, here's a crucible holder, and all this is is concrete and perlite. I kind of mixed it together and I hope that the perlite kind of insulates the coil a little bit and all I did was kind of pack it in there and then use the crucible to, uh, you know, hold it in place. So let's try this out. I made it easy to change coils here, so all you have to do is unscrew this little copper nut right here and then pull off the tube like that and hope you don't spill all the water. And then you can slip the new coil right on in there. All right, let's see if we can melt some aluminum. <laughs> Shapes are hard. So I'm just gonna throw some aluminum in here. All right, we'll add some corns and let's see how fast this is. Let's see if it can even do it. All right, three, two, one. Oh wow, I see it. Wow, it's already red hot in there. Oh my, it's going so fast. Wow, that is really melting. Whoa, look at that. When I turn it on and off, the aluminum bounces. All right, all right, all right. That is. That is by far the fastest I've ever melted any aluminum. That's crazy. Did you see how it was jumping like that? Now what do I do with it? I wasn't actually expecting that it would work. Let's go on to the next experiment. <laughs> so it does aluminum super easy, but what about magnesium? Ah! This is one of these uh, emergency fire starters that I got from the store. Let's see if we can melt this 
put it right in there. The like, whole block? The whole block. Look at that. It just goes boing straight up. <laughs> huh, did you see that? The rod just came out. Woo. All right, the thermal camera says it's uh, 600 degrees. Oh, look, it's melting. Whoa, 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 did you see that? Whoa, 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 did you see that? It almost jumps out. Oh my God, okay, that's kind of scary. <laughs> whoa! Yep, so uh, magnesium also burns in air. It's also... Let's say hi, Primrose. It's also basically impossible to put out a magnesium fire. Why do you... Why do you do this? I don't want to get the camera too close because it could fry the camera. So now we have a bunch of uh, uh, magnesium that's <laughs> on fire. Get away from it. What me. do we do with it? I'm trying to get a rod to like poke it. Oh, it's pretty. Ew! Ah! Oh, it's like a sparkler. Oh, dangerous. wow. Look at this. It's stuck to the steel. Uh, ah. Why is it? St I didn't know that. Look at it. It's totally stuck to the Dude, steel. It's so bright, you can't even see. This is wild. What a beautiful and deadly sparkler. I probably shouldn't hold it straight up. Oh, right. It's sticky. Like... Can you... Not? I wonder if magnesium gives off ultraviolet light. I know it burns so hot. <laughs> Maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments does know, though. All right. Now what? Oh, yeah, we can... All right, I've got some steel here. I just want to see if we can melt the steel. All right, let's see. Look at that. It's melting. It's melting already. Uh... Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cool. Whoa! <laughs> We're, we must be like boiling the steel. Here's a pro tip for you guys. Always make sure there's no spiders in your gloves because uh, you only make that mistake once. So I've heard that molten steel All right, can here we go. Are you ready? in contact with water. So I'm going to try to throw molten steel on this small pan Three, on two, the ground. Three, two, one. Whoa! That was so much bigger than I thought it was going to be. That was so scary. Well, obviously, a tiny right, container ready? like that's going to be impossible Three, to hit. Two, so I added a one. second one. Whoa! But it was still impossible to Three, hit. Three, two, one. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, let's see if a molten steel actually explodes when it hits water. Are you ready? We also tried throwing molten steel in a ditch. Ah, it didn't explode, but it was pretty cool. And my pool. Oh, no, that was awesome. Oh my gosh. But we just couldn't get the molten steel to explode. All right, now I wanna see if we can levitate this piece of aluminum in this coil right here. So I'm gonna put this paper towel in the coil like this, and then put the piece of aluminum on it. And then when we turn it on, I should just be able to pull the paper towel out and the aluminum will just float there. Let's try it. Hey, look at that, it's just floating there. It works. Now is it gonna melt is the question. Okay, look at that, it stopped moving. It's just sitting there hovering. And now I'm gonna turn it off and uh, back up. All right, here we go, three, Two, one, hey, <laughs> it worked. That was so silly, but it was so cool. So when I was making my first induction heater two years ago, I saw the circuit that I'm using now and I was terrified of it. It seemed so complicated, but after two years of doing small electrical projects, I finally got the confidence to go back and tackle this circuit. And I believe that KiwiCo can offer the same benefit. KiwiCo offers super cool hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids to the concepts in STEAM. Each monthly crate is designed by experts and tested by kids and teaches a new theme through hands-on learning and fun. KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics, and each monthly box comes with all the supplies you'll need for that month's project. KiwiCo believes that by learning the skills to problem solve, innovate, and create, kids will grow up to change the world one day.
KiwiCode's mission is to empower kids not just to make a project, but to make a difference. Continuing to learn over summer break can make a big difference too, and KiwiCo crates are a great alternative to another day spent staring at screens. Now, when I was growing up, there was no KiwiCo crates, but my dad still bought me science kits. But digital logic projects was probably a little bit too complicated for a 10 year old. So if you want to build your own domino machine or any other one of the KiwiCo crates, head on over to kiwico.com slash MLP slash backyard and get 50, no, 100% off your first month, your first KiwiCo crates, 100% off a special offer for all of you who watch my videos. Thank you. So I think we smashed the goals of this project out of the park. I mean, we could definitely melt steel in the open air with this. We could definitely levitate and float aluminum. That was super cool. But when it comes to building or buying an induction heater, the final parts list for this induction heater came pretty close to the cost of just buying one yourself. And when you factor in the time it takes to build one of these and all the extra money I spent trying to find which parts work, I would definitely say it's more worth it to buy an induction heater if you're looking to buy one. And I would highly recommend building one yourself if you're into wasting months of your life. So yeah, that's basically it. Yeah. See you next video. See you next video? Yeah. Okay, bye.